So now we're going to talk about a special uh, virus that actually infects and destroys the immune system in terms of its function. And most individuals have heard of this virus called HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. So we'll spend some time talking about this virus because it specifically infects the immune system and destroys immune system function. So, so we should know how it works, why it works, and there's some interesting um, facts about individuals who are resistant to infection. So, uh, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, uh, most individuals know that this virus can infect CD4 positive helper T cells, and that's where a lot of the clinical manifestations of AIDS comes from, the destruction of CD4 positive helper T cells. Um, what some individuals don't know is that actually the virus can infect multiple types of cells in the body, specifically CD4 T cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. And the reason that it can do this is because the viral protein that latches onto cells, so the viral protein is called GP120, and it binds a protein found on the surface of some human cells called CD4. And now you're aware of the CD4 protein, most likely, because we talk a lot about CD4 positive helper T cells. So CD4, that protein, is the cellular receptor for HIV. Now, interestingly, CD4 protein is not just found on CD4 helper T cells. It's actually also found on the surface of macrophages and on the surface of dendritic cells. And this course really doesn't go into why is it there, what is its function. Right now, we're just talking about the fact that CD4 protein is actually present on the surface of different immune cells, specifically macrophages, dendritic cells, and CD4 cells. So that means HIV can infect and enter all of these cell types. So let's see that. So the, during the initial infection, and if you recall, HIV is a sexually transmitted virus. So during um, uh, sexual intercourse um, on protected sex, uh, there could be transmission of fluids that contain uh, the HIV protein, I'm um, sorry, HIV virus. Now, uh, during the initial infection, it is typically the macrophages and dendritic cells found within the reproductive system um, that become exposed to the virus. So the virus is infecting initially macrophages and dendritic cells. Now this initial infection occurs um, with a type of virus called the macrophagotropic virus. Now that means it can infect both macrophages and dendritic cells. And so uh, when this virus infects, it actually latches onto two proteins. It requires the CD4 protein for entry, binding and entry, but it also requires a co-receptor protein. And so on the macrophage and dendritic cells, during the initial uh, infection, the uh, co-receptor is uh, a protein called CCR5, which has a role in the immune system that's not important uh, to talk about, just knowing that uh, HIV, um, the virus, has to contact both of these proteins in order for the virus to infect macrophages and dendritic cells. So once the, intern uh, the initial infection has occurred, um, these cells will start producing virus or dendritic cells we know are migratory and can travel to lymphatic tissue where they're going to expose CD4 helper T cells to the virus. And these cells are typically found in lymph tissue. During this infection, actually, the virus uses a different protein to enter the cells. It uses CD4, but it also uses this protein called CXCR4. This version of the virus is called the lymphocytic, lymphocyte tropic virus because it is infecting lymphocytes, specifically CD4 positive T cells uh, or T lymphocytes. So really there are two, these two versions of the virus, the macrophage tropic, which is responsible for the initial infection, and the lymphocyte tropic, which is responsible for the spread of the pathogen with, between T cells in the body. And that is the version that ends up causing uh, this immunodeficiency, because once T lymphocytes are infected, T cells can die by a number of different reasons. Um, HIV causes death of T cells uh, many different ways. But the end result is T cells, specifically CD4 positive T cells, will start to die over the course of 2 to 15 years after infection, if there is no uh, intervention. And so uh, individuals will not have any effector T cells, Th1, Th2, Th17, uh, follicular helper T cells. So those individuals will suffer from an immunodeficiency 
which we call AIDS, which is, stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. It's acquired because it's an infection that causes or leads to immunodeficiency. So this is um, an example of immunodeficiency that uh, is severe, and it's combined because it affects both uh, T-cell immunity and uh, B-cell immunity. So uh, AIDS is a type of sk uh, a skid severe combined immunodeficiency, but it is acquired by infection. So individuals who suffer from the severe immunodeficiency, we know are susceptible to many pathogens that a normal immune system can easily repel. And we talk about these pathogens being opportunistic infections. So there are quite a, a large class of pathogens which a normal immune system can easily detect, attack, and repel. That as somebody who has AIDS or another severe combined immunodeficiency, cannot. So fungal infections, bacterial infections, um, viral infections, that parasitic infections, that a normal uh, intact immune system can easily uh, control and repel. Uh, somebody who has AIDS or severe combined immunodeficiency cannot repel these pathogens. And individuals end up dying from opportunistic infections, typically. Uh, a pathogen that normally doesn't kill somebody with a normal immune system uh, can uh, injure uh, somebody's organs and tissue so greatly uh, that individuals die from these opportunistic infections. Um, why is HIV so difficult to attack? Well, first of all, it's uh, leading to immunodeficiency. So a virus that infects and uh, infects and affects the immune system is obviously going to be harder to mount an immune attack towards. So if you're lacking CD4 helper T cells, you're lacking um, the stimulation of B cells, you're lacking the ability to activate your macrophages or uh, active help uh, your neutrophils. You still have macrophages, you still have neutrophils, you still have B cells, uh, but those cells don't work as well uh, without CD4 cells around. Um, the other thing is that uh, individuals who have HIV infections uh, will produce antibodies to the pathogen, but these antibodies are of poor quality. So neutralizing antibodies that are made by a person's immune system don't tend to work well for lots of different reasons. Uh, some of it has to do with the immunogenicity of the GP120 protein. Um, so these proteins don't seem to stimulate a good B cell response. And even if antibodies are made against GP120, they don't seem to bind in the correct conf configuration that block the virion from infecting cells, from it, block it from binding to its receptor and co-receptor. So these antibodies are of poor quality. Um, the infection also doesn't stimulate a strong immune response. HIV is a retrovirus, and uh, its uh, proteins that it makes don't seem to stimulate the immune system very well. So uh, if the immune system can't uh, present pathogen peptides, uh, it's going to have uh, issues stimulating an immune response. So it's a, it does a good job hiding from the immune system. Um, there are interventions, uh, drug interventions, that uh, can be used to stop the inf life cycle of the virus. Uh, but since HIV is a retrovirus, it has a high mutation rate. So early efforts to stop the infection were thwarted because the virus would evolve resistance to certain drugs. So there would be a drug that would block an enzyme's catalytic site, but the virus would uh, mutate and resist the uh, pathogen, uh, resist the, the drug. Um, so it can evolve antiviral resistance quite easily. Uh, nowadays, there is a way to treat HIV infection so that it becomes a, just a chronic livable infection, and that is with combined drug therapy. So there is a treatment called HEART, Highly Active Antiretroviral Therapy, which is a combination of four to six drugs that are used and given all at one time to a patient. And um, while the virus could evolve resistance to any one of these drugs on its own, it is uh, much more unlikely that a virus would evolve resistance to six drugs at the same time. So um, you're preventing uh, the viral life cycle by a combination of drugs. It's theoretically possible that a virus could evolve resistance to all six at once. It's just much less likely. So individuals who have the heart therapy um, have very low viral loads. They're producing very low to little amounts of virus. Are they cured? 
Well, they are not because um, the viral genome is integrated into their DNA. So retroviruses um, can uh, produce uh, DNA from their RNA and the DNA becomes integrated into their uh, cells. Uh, so those individuals are living with a chronic HIV infection, but living a relatively normal life. There are side effects with these, of these drugs uh, and these drugs have not been around very long. So uh, it's unclear um, how long individuals could live uh, being treated with heart therapy, although it does seem to be working very well right now. So that is um, introduction to HIV, and we'll spend an, another video talking about uh, individuals who are resistant to HIV infection.